good evening to some. I think I have three people watching me, and I've been on for a minute. All right, three people watching. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to be going over popular chord progressions in quartet music. If you guys have any questions, write it in the comment. I'll try to catch everybody's um, comment. Um, and let's just... I'm playing in key of C and a lot of progressions quartet progressions of C um, are like one four five one four five six one five six one two five four and when I talk about the one two three four five I'm talking about the the number system and, and that's just basically based on on the major scale and one two three four five six seven and then back to one yeah. so, so if i was to do a progression a basic quartet progression the one five Six and then to the four. Those are basic um, uh, progressions that you'll hear quartet um, songs are based around. major minor major movements like that minor major minor major minor and then go to like the four and that's the F and using that open E hey how are you I see you down there um making that four and using the open E, doing a hammer on, you know. Hey, Jackie. And that's going back to the C. So one, five, diminish, going into the six. So many different ways that you can do that. Going to the one, right? The four, which is still triads, and then going to that six, that minor, A minor, and then to the four. country little hammer on and back to the one Quartet stuff.
seven. Eight minus seven. G minus seven. which is that um, G famous one there. I would play like when we'd be playing the drive I would play a line stick when I would go to a drive. loud car if y'all hear that. 
put a muffler or something on that thing we got. How many guitar plays I have on here? Where my guitar plays at? What's up, Chris? You like that? Yeah, that walk. Same walk. Let's see what you're saying here. Happy New Year to you. Uh, Happy New Year to you. Thank you for hanging out. Oh, please stop. You know, most people, <laughs> most people who say that are killer players. Uh, do it again. What's up, Brian? Thank you. Get to play. Oh, <laughs> they can't run out of power now. Thank you for coming, Jackie. No snow is really cold. That's it. Don't forget about you. Never turn back. Ah, I, I, trying to remember that. Um. Ah, I forgot it. I got you. The fundamentals of playing quartet guitar. The first fundamental is making sure that your guitar is tuned, which I just did. Okay. The other one is really paying attention, and I'm gonna do rise again for you. I didn't want to. I'm not gonna forget that. But what you want to do is listen to the vocals. Um, because a lot of times, and I was talking about this yesterday, a lot of times um, guitar players will play, excuse me, they will play major seven chords over major chords, dominant chords with, that the vocals are singing. So the biggest thing is, is listening to the vocals. And if they go in here, don't play. Because that changes the... the the song or the music, um, and then also make sure that you don't play a minor over a major. If they sing it, you don't want to play the minor. Um, mainly miss, uh, listening to the vocalist, pay attention to your your lead singer. Um, I, If you watch any of the videos that I played with, like any of the groups, I was fixated on the lead singer and listening to um, what the keyboard player was doing, if I had a keyboard player that was playing, I would listen to make sure that 
what I was doing was matching up with what he was playing. So. Sounds like a Gibson ES30, not 339. It actually isn't. It's a Paul Reed Smith hollow body SE. I actually have a 335. I don't have a 339. I have a, the 335. <laughs> have a 339 do you own the 339 I think the only difference I think is the body is a little smaller on the 339 than a 335 <laughs> Thank you. 
advice on good tone. Um, I don't care if it's a $400 guitar or a $4,000 guitar. Um, your tone is in your hands and your heart. Um, that's where it starts. And playing with clarity, making sure that you know your instrument, know what these knobs do, what exactly what they do, what this toggle switch do. Um, having a good amplifier, good strings, fresh strings. Hey, Thomas, um, those are very important to start with. And then, you know, tweaking. You know, right now I'm playing through a, um, a little head, a little quilter. I think you guys can see it right there. That's the quilter. A little small head that big. But the tone on this thing is amazing. I know. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But yeah, that's where it starts um, For as far as tone. With me, it's just like I have to have good strings, fresh strings. And then, you know what? Everything matters. I promise you. Um, even your pick. If you can see, I'm using a V pick. And this is my favorite pick. And it makes a difference in my tone, you know. It it may seem um, weird, but it does. You know, your cables, making sure you have good cables. And, you know, everything that's that happens on this thing makes a difference with your tone. So, hey, Thomas, what's up with you, man? And you know what, Val, let me tell you something. I learned so much from Val, Val Alexander, all this stuff. Val play because you hear Val would play a lot of open string stuff. came up when they went um, out. And then they went to that. <laughs> to the two, and then back to the one. Yeah. And then he would use that chorus of phase 90. Oh, that was my favorite, one of my favorite guitar players. Spending time with him. He showed me another chord progression. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> he taught me that chord progression. It was like. Come up with this stuff. <laughs> he was a he was a monster with it, and he didn't get the credit that I felt like he deserved. But those who know him or knew him know what a um, amazing guitar player. That's hard to say. That's hard to say who I learned the most from because I learned different things from different groups, okay? Um, the keynotes were more open when it came to 
music and they were open to different changes and and whatnot but when i played with slim it was a pattern it, he taught me discipline and then playing with sugar hightower and al dent oh that was crazy <laughs> Sugar, High Tower, and Al Dent. I'm telling you. Yeah, I am using the side of my pick. Um, I am, and if you you can hear it, hear it. But actually, the rounded, the actually the pick is really rounded on all. It doesn't have a sharp edge. They all, it's rounded. And I have, I don't think I have it up here. But I have some in my, in my bag. But yeah, the pick is not, doesn't have a sharp edge. There are other picks that I keep on my desk here. I don't really use them. I'll use them if I drop a pick. Because I like a super heavy pick. Absolutely. Um, this is another one that's pretty heavy. But I don't use thin picks. I have one up here um, because I think it doesn't offer. I, I lose control of my pick, and I like to be able to control my picking. Not me. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Am I your favorite quartet guy? <laughs> I learned a lot from so many. I can't take credit for. Um, I I can't take credit for any of my playing styles because I learn from everybody. I learn from Sugar. I learn from Al. I learned from Val Alexander. I learned from Spanky. I learned from Dwight Gordon. I learned from so many great guitar players. Um, you know, playing with Willie Banks. That was another <laughs> discipline. I almost got fired the first, first day I went to play with Willie Banks and the Messengers. I want to share this stuff because um, we don't want to lose it. We really don't want to lose it. We don't want we don't want music and fundamentals and the the, um, the foundation of quartet to die when people die. We want it to stay alive, so we have to pass it on. You know, I was talking about the guitar player for Doc McKenzie. His name is Daryl Henley. And Daryl is another one that doesn't get the credit. Um, he doesn't get the credit for what he does. He's a phenomenal guitar player, and he does all of this and sings at the same time. So Daryl is one of another one of my favorite guitar players. What happened with Willie Banks? <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. I had been playing with the Supreme Angels, I think, for about six or seven years and when I left the Supreme Angels I went with Willie Banks but if you know the two groups the styles are completely different Willie Banks is more Being said and that being played, 
I went to Willie Banks playing the Supreme Angel style of playing. So it was like... <laughs> No, and you know what was funny? Because we was actually in rehearsal. We were rehearsed with Willie Banks and his garage and at his house. He had a big old garage, had all the equipment and everything. We go in there and we rehearse. And he came down, he was listening. He didn't say nothing. He kind of looked over and I was like, I'm playing that. I'm thinking, I'm killing. I'm saying, okay, I'm impressing Willie Banks. He just looking. He ain't saying nothing. And for those who know Willie Banks, they know he can look at you. <laughs> and you really, sometimes you know what he's thinking, sometimes you don't. Well, this time I didn't know him. I didn't know him like that. So I thought I was doing it. <laughs> um, but when we got finished, when we got finished, he asked me, um, he said, he said, what group are you playing for? I said, I said, your group, sir. He said, not in about an hour. He said, because you're going <laughs> you to be played on the bus. You're going to be played on the Greyhound bus. They didn't send you home on the plane back then. They put you on the bus on the Greyhound from Raymond, Mississippi to to Raleigh, North Carolina, I was going to be riding on the bus. So, I'm like, yep. And the way he said it wasn't very polite either. <laughs> so, after that, I went. that would be it. I wouldn't play it any other way. <laughs> and then when I play... crazy about these guys they both knew exactly what they wanted to hear slim knew exactly what he wanted to hear with um his guitar player willie banks and the and i play it like this because that's what willie banks said he wanted he would play he said groups I played with, the gospel keynotes, Willie Neal Johnson loved guitar, so it was certain things that he would want. When I got with um, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, Joe Lagan, if you notice, Joe Lagan would often sit or stand by the guitar player because he was listening for guitar cues. <laughs> listen for he would he if Joe didn't hit those cues
had to hear that. He had to hear that. Or if we, if we were doing the Robin song, we call it the Robin song. He, that was his cue to come in with his verse. testimony it was it was the licks that he would listen for that would give him his cues because believe it or not his timing wasn't that great <laughs> was it so said what do you think set apart old school quartet from new quartet okay and this is not a this is not a negative to anybody, to any groups or anything that's going on currently. But what was different um, between the older groups and the new groups and and I can't really say because I'm not on the road with these groups now. Um, I guess no groups is really out on the road right now, but I miss hearing the pocket. Um, you go back, you look at drummers like Johnny Valentine and Bobo um, and different ones, Papa Hightower, Freddie Berry, and all of these different drummers. Um, uh, Mike Richardson with the Cantons, um, you know, and different ones, even with the William Brothers. The drummers played pocket, and now it's it's really hard to find the one um, when listening to the new music because everything is moving so quickly, and what's lost in the music is um, they're they're playing more to the musicians than they are the lay ears, the people who are sitting there who don't understand these different movements. So what happens is they are playing the music and they're satisfying their own taste instead of satisfying those people that are sitting there who may not understand. But they may not know it, but they can feel it or not feel it. Um, one of the biggest songs in gospel um, uh, was um, F.C. Barnes and Janice Brown. Simple song, Coming Up the Rough Side of the Mountain. Or I just played one, Willie Banks and the Messages. Two, two chords, God is still in charge. Two chords, a D major to a G major. A D major to a G major. Two chords, two chords. Losing the feel, exact, losing the feel of the song. Um, because if it's moving too much, if it's every time you think you're there, or even if, even if there is a good message in the song, sometimes it's lost because of the distraction. And that's really big with being a, a guitar player, or a drummer, a bass player, or whatever, a keyboard player. If the focus is supposed to be on the lead vocalist or the message of the song, it's lost if I'm going. It's lost because what happens is that's taken away from what's going on out front and what the message is being sent. So less, and people say that, Less is more, but less is absolutely more. Less and allowing music to breathe is so critical. Yeah, when they, when they would hear, yeah, 
that, right there. When they would hear that intro, they knew right away. They you <laughs> so playing that song back then. Right then, now it would go. You would not know what is being played. You had you would have no idea what that particular song would be. In the really world is that what's going on right there <laughs> I promise you be asking Kev, oh you be saying to your wife or whoever said what song is that and then they said Lord I know you been oh I'm like oh that's all <laughs> yeah so that's the difference that's the the long version a long answer to why I what's different between um uh, then and now, um, I think that um, we should really play more, or music should be created or produced um, more geared towards the people understanding and getting the message um, from the music, and us playing the supporting role. And we talked about, I talked about this to with someone. I said um, they created a supporting actor or actress award because of a reason, because the support is as important as the person out front, the starring actor. Um, the starring role is very important, but if you don't have a great support system, whatever you're creating can't be good unless it's a one-man show. But if you have a great supporting cast, you have a great band, um, great band director, um, musicians who understand. And one of my favorite sayings in a, um, in a movie was in Drumline when it was said, um, one band, one sound, one band, one sound. You know, when everybody is playing together and that music is clicking and you can't, when you can hear every instrument, that's a beautiful thing. But when you have everybody fighting for space, um, the music is so loud that you know you can't really hear because everybody's fighting to get their self heard or to impress that person that's standing um, back beside you or whatever looking from the wing. But the crazy thing is, and um, you know, sad to say, but musicians don't they don't buy music, they don't buy tickets. Those are the people that don't really play. Um, that's buying the, the tickets, they buy the music, you know, so that's where I'm at. Do you like open E drives? I like the open E drives. <laughs> tell you I like D better I like D better I do for some reason excuse me y'all I just I just finished eating and I'm burping like crazy
Daryl Henley so good to support and placement. Daryl understands the music. Um. see me a little better like this my hands a little better Let's see You don't have to be a professional to register or send the video. The video mainly is for me to know the place you in which class, okay? Because I, I have several classes and I want to make sure that I place you in the, the correct class. And I'll touch on that in one second, okay? But I want you to, um, I think Hilly had asked. And then the, going to the A. stuff you can play in E. talk with with Donald real quick and I'll get to yours uh, Mr. Jones but yeah um, don't worry about being a professional musician um, it doesn't matter it does not matter it doesn't matter what level you are in boot camp because like I said I have several classes and um, the reason why I asked for a video is because um, because I want to know how to place you. I want to. I don't want to put you in a class um, where the stuff is too slow or the stuff is too fast or whatever. So I, I, I really want to put you in a place where, where you'll be comfortable, and I'm able to really do the one-on-one -on -one because the, it's really important for me to get in and do, you know, basically one. That's why we're limiting the classes because I don't want. 50 people in one class because it doesn't give me time to to dedicate with you just be like you know hey Donald let's let me hear you do this okay try to, to make it do like like this try to finger it like this this is the movement this is what I'm doing and that's that's the beauty of the boot camp I'm telling you I absolutely love the boot camp I do private sessions but I absolutely love, 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 love the boot camp because I'm able to really spend time with a group of people and we have fun. We have so much fun. You'll see. We have fun, but I'm telling you something, it's not easy because I'm pretty hard. They call me Sergeant Carter. So please send your video in. Any advice? Stay fright. Confidence to play in front of people. Listen, let me tell you something. I have stage fright to this day, and I've been doing this for a very long time. I have stage fright to this day, right now. I can get on stage, it may not seem like it, but I can get on stage now, 
and that I played in the biggest arenas. I played in I think Canada at a festival when it was ninety like ninety nine, ninety something thousand people there. I played in the Washington Redskins Stadium. I played in Madison Square Garden. I played in the biggest arenas you can imagine, and I I still get nervous. But you know what? I get more nervous in front of ten people than I do ten thousand. Isn't that crazy? I'll be more nervous to get in front of 10 people and talk and play than I would 10,000. It's weird, you know. Um, but the more you do it, Trey, the more that you do it, the more comfortable you'll get at it. Just like me doing this. You know, I normally, I'm the type of guy that's on stage and I'm, I'm comfortable behind my guitar, standing behind the group or behind my artists and playing. This stuff right here that we're doing right now, me talking to you, um, this is all new, but I'm, I enjoy it because I'm able to share information with you guys um, that I couldn't just as a, a guitar player. Um, so I'm, I'm real happy I'm able to, to take time and spend time with you guys and, and talk with you and share with you give you some tips and um, let you guys know, you know, if you're really interested in, in furthering um, your playing as quartet, but you know, let me tell you something. The boot camp is a uh, quartet guitar boot camp, but you learn much more. Everything that you learn in boot camp, you can use anywhere. I've had, I have jazz instructors. I mean, that teaches at, at colleges um, in my boot camp. You know, so they're able to translate and take this information and use it for um, whatever they're doing. And that's the same thing with the quartet boot camp. You know, all types of players, styles of players. You know, Juno the artist, um, Bobby Griffin, and I mean guys who play quartet. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube. D.L. Edwards, um, a lot of the guys, Travis Calvin, have a lot of great guitar players that go through my boot camp. Because what they're doing is they're sharpening up um, places where they may not be as strong. And that's what I focus on is, is where you're weak is at, where you're not comfortable. I make sure that you're comfortable so you won't have that to, to deal with. So I hope that answers your question. All right. Um, I said, thank you so much. I couldn't figure out the exact movement I've been... Ah, uh, you've been winging it. No, don't wing it. Don't wing it. My question is, what information should musicians know, both from beginner to intermediate to professional? Please help. You know what? That's a that's a great question, James. That's that is a great question, and I can't answer it in its entirety. But um, if you go to my site, and there. Are, um, and sign up for that boot camp. I cover all of that. But what you want to do is learn your instrument. Learn this. Because there's there's a lot of aspects to that. Because it's, it's much more than just playing your guitar. Um, it's knowing the business. Um, knowing how to market yourself. Um, knowing um, the right gear to have, um, being able to get along with people, you know, being able to be on tour with folks. It, like I was just saying earlier, I don't know if you was on here, um, but I was saying how I almost got fired the first day I played with Willie Banks because I went in with the mentality like I was playing with the Supreme Angels, and that doesn't work. So knowing who you're working for, and knowing what what you're working towards, um, you know, keeping me, keeping God first, you know, having a good balance because without a support system, if you're married, um, you can't have an angry wife and do this <laughs> effectively because your mind is not there. So being able to have a free mind and all of that stuff, it's just so much that go along with this. People think you can just pick it up and just start playing, become professional. It's much, 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 much more to it. And, and it's more to being a professional musician than torn out on the road. 
there are things that you can do. You can do movie scores. You can do soundtracks. You can do commercials. You can do so many other things outside of playing with a a torn artist or something, man. Because if that was the case, when COVID hit, it would have been over, you know? So there are a lot of things that we miss, you know? Sometimes, no, I'm not even going to give away all my info. I can't give away all my information. <laughs> Y'all won't come to boot camp. Yeah, um, but yeah, listen. A lot of this information I'm going to share with, with everybody who's part of the boot camp. Some of it I can share here, but I really want you to come into camp um, and get this stuff because we cover some of everything. Okay, Troy, what's up? I signed up for boot camp, waiting for class assignments to start. The date update. Class starts on January the 15th. January 15th. Information will go out shortly. Um, you will get a pre-assignment um, probably the week of a boot camp and you'll have time to work on it. But get ready. Get ready, Troy. The link, let me see if I can put the link here is ready. That's it right there. And it's on all caps, but it doesn't have to be all caps. It doesn't have to be all caps. It's KevinWilsonGuitar.com. But yeah, let me tell you something. Um, hey! <laughs> Welcome to the party, Miss Sonya. Um, I'm going to tell you something. These people are asking some great questions. We have some people that's interested in the boot camp coming in they were asking for the link if you're able to to post the link um, to the boot camp that'd be great but they asking me some really 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 great questions they was asking me about um, playing on the road different things and what's the difference between now and then with quartet music and um, that was funny one that was a hilarious one <laughs> Then I was I was asked to play some dry stuff. Then playing that minor, y'all. And that's just one string. But it ain't, it's more than one string. But it's moving one string. questions um, for me about traveling, about the road, about playing, breaking into the industry. question for you guys. I have a question and please somebody please answer this for me. Why do people love drive so much? Why do people like drive so much? I'm I'm, I'm me, I like drive, but man, let me tell you something. I would rather play a slow song anytime. I'm telling you for real.
I was in minor. That's a minor. back down let me catch that that was minor now we do major some of these questions here y'all moving fast for me okay awesome wait that drive e minor i've been making uh, major sense hmm. what's your guitar you would recommend purchasing that won't break your pocket preferably five to twelve hundred dollars um this one Paul Reed Smith, S.E. Paul Reed Smith, S.E. This does. And I can play overdrives. I can change the tone. I can go to acoustic. recommend the GNL Legacy, the, the American made GNL Legacy is great guitar. And you can find those for around $800. Um, the GNL Legacy is a really, really, really great guitar. Feels good, um, plays well, and you can get some really great tone from that. Um, those are two that really stands out for me. Okay. Okay. How do you approach playing in church? Your mindset and attitude. My mindset and attitude as far as playing in church is um, ministry first. <laughs> ministry first um, the message, and we talked about, I just talked about um, playing with an, um, somebody out front and making sure that that message is getting across. At my particular church, we have a really big band. We have um, keyboard player, bass player, drummer, two horn players, organ, and guitar. So it's a pretty big band. And our band has been together for like 20 years at, at Upper Room. And we understand each other. We understand um, where um, everyone is musically. And then we understand the ministry of the church. So I can't go in playing um, James Fortune or um, James Hall at um, Upper Room because Upper Room is a traditional based church. Um, our pastor is a, he loves all types of music, but he is a really traditional um, type uh, music lover. Um, our church is, um, we have young people, we have quite a few young people there, but um, a lot of the people are older people, so they love the traditional 
um, style music. Con you know, contemporary will work at, at a point, but uh, main thing, um, they're doing more traditional type music. So I'm not going in trying to sound like Eddie Van Halen. I'm not going in trying to sound like Slash and I'm not trying to shred. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make my guitar fit in with what's going on musically. And if we're doing, um, if we're doing a song by an artist, um, like um, Ricky Dillett redid um, Rooftop by the Mighty Clouds of Joy, Keep One the Boy Johnson. Let it, I'm thinking to play like the song was written. I know it's the the way that they played it is different from the Mighty Clouds of Joy who written had wrote the song, um, and so I'm not thinking like I I'm playing with the clouds. I'm thinking like what did the guitar player lay down and what's working, and what's going to make this song feel good without me soloing. <laughs> you know, I don't need to solo. I need to play the part. So I hope that answered your question. Um, ego thing. Um, ego. Um, I don't deal with egos. Um, not in boot camp. Um, Sonya has been in my boot camp. She'll tell you I don't. I don't play ego. I'll I'll refund your money, and say let's be, let's be friends. And I enjoy what you do. Um, but I don't deal with egos. There's, and when I say judgment free, there's nobody judging anyone but me. And when I judge you, it's because I want to make you um, the guitar player that you want to be. You know, I want you to be able to play the things that you hear in your mind, you hear in your ear. I want you to be able to translate that right here. So my thing in boot camp is to extend and add. Um, tools to your toolbox because that's what I the way I deal with it. I want to give you tools I give you a bunch of tools and Then I show you how to use those tools and you don't use um, a wrench Where a screwdriver is needed and that's the way I look at it So if if it doesn't call for a major seven it calls for dominant or diminished That's what I want you to, to play so I teach you how to play diminish in different ways and how to scale over that particular chord. So I'm adding to your toolbox. So when it's time to use that screwdriver or that plier, you have different types of pliers that you could use that will work. And that's why I refer to it as adding tools to your toolbox. Boot camp is is where I have a class setting. You know, we have maybe 15, 20 people in the class and I have different classes because there are different levels because everybody's not at the same level. So I have different levels. That's why I ask for videos and there's a questionnaire and I teach different approaches. I teach different methods on how to approach music as a quartet but it, it's transferable because you're able to use those same methods in any style of music. Um, I've taught people like Eric Walls and Eric Walls play every style of music. He, he'll play anything, but his base is gospel. His foundation is gospel. And when I was teaching him, I think he started when he was 12 or 11 years old. You know, it was different things that he was doing and all I did was add it and brought and gave him an understanding on how to approach different things. And that's what I do in boot camp. I take what you're already doing, I expand it and give you options. Nothing too far out where you can't reach it. Everything that you learn in boot camp is stuff that I know that you can do. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. Dwayne, what's up? Give me some Dwayne. Andy Townsend. Oh, what's up, man? Working on your telly. Yes, you can get um, you can get a private session with me. Absolutely. Um, please, I'm gonna put my email address in here, and email me at excuse me.
Yep, email me there, and I will. Um, uh, I will get you set up for a private session. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all kind of moving kind of fast for me. Um. Yes. Yeah, see. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Thompson. Thank you for coming on on my live. I appreciate it. As a pleasure, I really love the slow songs. I love the slow songs too. Chords, chord melodies. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Said that's why I've been sounding weird when I. <laughs> That's funny. What are some common chords? Gospel music, worship. Common chords. Now, um, I say for CCM. G's a C. chord the C, the D, the E minor, the C there, yeah. and back to the back to the G. So I hope that helped. chords and gospel music and worship songs yep thank you miss sonya thank you so much i'm glad you're a part of the boot camp all right i got another question down maurice morgan said you are amazing how did you get your sound i maurice is <laughs> maurice is a great friend of mine maurice morgan is he he lo he missed his calling because Maurice Morgan should have been um, on the Kings of Comedy. Maurice Morgan, really, and you tell him whenever you talk to to Maurice, tell Maurice he can play. He's a great guitar player, great musician. Because when I brought Maurice out on the road, he didn't play guitar. He played keyboards, and he came out with Willie Banks. But 
Maurice should have been on the Kings of Comedy. I'm telling you, dude, this is hilarious. He is hilarious. <laughs> That's another uh, chord progression you hear in quartet. That's spanky there. more questions I'm gonna stay on for a few more minutes then I'm gonna get off here because I have some work to do <laughs> and as far as my scales and how I approach playing scales um, all of my scales come off of chords. And I'll show you in boot camp how to make those things move going to the two. Oh, how did I get my sound? How did I get my sound? I, I didn't even. How did I get my sound? I got my sound by listening to everybody. Um, and I didn't even answer that question. I got my sound by listening to everybody and everything and hearing music everywhere. Um, I'm a, somebody called me uh, Sunday. We were talking and we was at church and somebody said, Kevin, you are a tone Nazi. They said, I am a tone Nazi. I didn't know whether that was a compliment <laughs> Or what? Because, you know, I don't want to be associated as a Nazi, but I understood what he was saying. Um, tone is everything. If my tone is not right, I'm not right, man. That's why I hate on certain amplifiers, which I, I refuse. To, my resolution in 2022 was not to say this particular amplifier that I absolutely hate. And blues... Is the blues to you like church? Absolutely. Why is blues like um, church? Because blues is played with a feeling. And gospel music is played with a feeling. gospel from the blues to me those triad modes you were doing is there an underlying thought process going on yep there is but you know what Hilly you got to come 
to the boot camp. Because I can give you stuff, just like you can find stuff on YouTube, and, and the stuff on YouTube is great. But learning how to, like I was talking earlier, learning how to use those tools. Having a tool is one thing. One of the biggest mistakes that you, uh, um, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is having a tool, and I did it. I had gear, and I have gear around here, and I didn't read the manual, so I did not understand how to use it. Jonathan Dubose, a good friend of mine, he came to the summit one year, and um, what he talked about was a tuner, a tuner. He had bought this tuner, and he was trying to use it, and he thought it was defective, so he called the manufacturer. Cause he never he never read the manual, cause he was gonna send it back. He said this doesn't work. Why you know that? <laughs> he said this doesn't work. But what happened was, he called them and they asked him a simple question. And he said, "No, I didn't." And when he did what they told him to do, it worked perfectly. So. The uh, moral to the story is I can give you tools here on in you know on YouTube, but until I explain to you really in depth how it works, you'll just have something, and you really won't know how to use it because you'll play something over something and it, it'll be wrong, and people will look at you kind of weird because you're playing something that doesn't fit, you know. So the thing is, you want to use a screwdriver when it's time to use a screwdriver and not a hammer when you're trying to screw something into um, into place. And that's uh, my answer to that. Ronald, you got to come to boot camp. Yes, you have to come. Breaking down your... Uh, amazing Grace. Uh... <laughs>
Um, who was that asked for that? Rex, was that what you're looking for? Please do sign up. Yeah, the passing triads. I love triads, Rex. I love the triads. Yeah. course rex as we speak i'm adding content to it every day so really really soon very soon and the next week or so you'll be able to go to my online course as well but you can also join the boot camp at kevinwilsonguitar.com and a lot of the stuff that i'm doing here or you hear me play on youtube or instagram or facebook um, you'll be able to catch that stuff in the boot camp. I go over the, the same concept. And the great thing about the boot camp is it's done all by Zoom, but we record every session. We record every session that we have, and you'll have access to that information whenever you need it. So you just go on, you log in, choose the, the um, week that you want to go over the information you want to catch and go rewind it back and back and back and back and forth and um it works at your convenience but i appreciate it thank you rex i can hear the spanky and all let me tell you something if you hear spanky that's saying a lot Whenever I somebody say, man, I hear Spanky. Whew. It's been great. I've been on for an hour and a half hanging out with you guys. And I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for, for stopping in. Um, I'm sure we'll leave this up. Um, for more information about boot camp, please visit KevinWilsonGuitar.com. Um, please like, subscribe, um, and chat with me. Um, what you guys are doing is helping me online, I promise. So we can get more information to more people so we can keep this thing alive, keep the the foundation of quartet music. And that's my whole thing. I want to be able to keep the foundation of quartet music alive and 
And this is one um, way that I'm able to do it without having to get out and travel all over the world. I'm, I'm 60 years old, so I don't want to be on nobody's tour bus. I promise I don't. <laughs> I'd rather be here um, talking with you guys and sharing with you guys and doing my boot camp and, and doing private sessions and stuff and just adding content to um, to our, our course uh, and all of that good stuff. So um, with you guys sharing and subscribing and liking and 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 writing, and you know, it opens up the door for YouTube to say, hey, listen, check out Kevin Wilson. He's sharing some good information. And um, share this with your friends. You have musician friends or guitar players or um, whatnot. Just share this information with them and tell them, come check out Kevin Wilson. He's doing some pretty pretty cool stuff or maybe he's making a lot of mistakes maybe you can get on there and show him what's what but i appreciate it thank you so much daniel appreciate you coming in um rex you are welcome man i appreciate you coming hanging out everybody that's been on here thank you sonia thank you everybody i appreciate you guys so much and i look forward to seeing you guys the ones that's in boot camp get ready information coming shortly your assignments coming shortly um, the schedule will come out shortly. Um, know it that it's going to be on Saturday. All the, the courses are done on Saturday, Saturday morning, um, or t more towards noon. Um, so all of that stuff will um, um, happen. Yes, private sessions. Please email me at Kevin at Kevin Wilson Guitar. Kevin at Kevin Wilson Guitar dot com. That's my email address. That's for the private sessions. Is Kevin at KevinWilsonGuitar.com. Thank you, um, Donald. Appreciate you hanging out, man. Oh, man, it's my pleasure sharing, sharing, sharing. So I'm hoping that something I've done or played or said will um, help you along your way and put you in the direction that um, you want to go. Rex, um, I'll write down this email address. This is, that's my email address. So you can, you can, um, let me see if I can keep that up there. Um, so you can email me at that email address and we'll set up a time where we can get together and share some information. I can't wait, I can't wait to hear what you have to offer because I'm sure that you, um, you're a great guitar player. And so I look forward to hearing you as well. And for the uh, gentleman that said that they didn't want to send a video, please send me that video. It's very important. If you signed up for boot camp for you to send me that video, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it and say, okay, I'm, you need to be in this class. You need to be in this class. You need to be in that class. So I can put you in a place where you're comfortable and you get the most out of boot camp. But you're going to have to work because I stretch everybody. Accountability is huge, humongous, humongous. So. With that being said, I am going to sign off. Have a great week. Happy New Year to everyone. And I hope to talk with you guys soon. Remember, every week I'm posting information um, every week. So come on and check out um, the stuff that I'm sharing. A lot of good content um, that I'm sharing every week. So um, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Kevin Wilson Guitar, Twitter. Everything is Kevin Wilson Guitar, okay? You guys have a great one. Take care.